everybody welcome into the building happy monday i hope y'all all all had an amazing weekend i had a really 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 good weekend um i had brunch with friends on um brunch lunch whatever you want to call it with friends on saturday sunday i just went to church kind of took it easy um had the show i collaborated with um the juice radio on talk show we had a ball together we had did a good nice little show together and then i sat down and i watched the real housewives of potomac Woo! come on now y'all they gave us the show last night, but the only reason why we had the show is because Chris Bassett was in the building and he showed up and showed out. He cleared the folks and shut it down. Yes, he did. We're going to talk about it. I sat up. I said, "Go!" I, I, I bravo, bravo to Chris. Shut, he, he shut it down. I know that's right. You better take up for your wife. That's what I'm talking about. Because it is, after all, called the Real Housewives of Potomac. And they can say what they want about Candace, but she got her husband. Yes, she do. Got her husband. He came through. Stood up for his boo. And personally, I think those two are cute together. Yeah, Candace is Candace, but they all got their ways. But he showed up for his boo. And you know what? In real time. Yeah, can't, he stood on business, Paula. Yes, he did. Come on through. He stood on business last night. He didn't curse. No, he did not. He stood on business last night. And they said, next. What's the next question? Said, fantastic. Giselle had that face on. He shut it down. Give it up for Chris in the chat. Okay, come on now. He did his thing last night. He was the reunion, the most valuable player. He came through. And honey, y'all know over here, y'all know I call it like I see it depending upon the episode. And last night, last night, Wendy told us she got four degrees. Well, she showed up last night. Yes, she did. She said, them girls, y'all ain't got the capacity to talk about colorism. So there's no need for us to have the conversation because y'all can't even level up and really have it. I said, oh, shucks. Now, there it is. There it is. There going on the degrees right there. You better talk to the people, Wendy. Y'all ain't ready, she said. So therefore, we can't have the conversation. Honey, they did the darn thing last night. Let me tell you this. In real time, like when you actually see it, Candace looks amazing. She looked amazing last night. That girl got body. She got legs. She got skin. Gorgeous. Beautiful girl. She still got a little work to do in terms of that mouth, but you know what? She's gorgeous. Uh-huh. And I think her and Chris are absolutely cute together. Adorable. Yeah, she woke. She was woke last night. You better come on, Special K. She was woke last night. She said, no, 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 no. Let me, let me talk. Before we can do this, we got to do that. She was woke last night. You better give it up for Chris and Wendy. A lot of kudos we got to give for this reunion last night. You know what? This is what I can't understand about Giselle. You destroyed about your father. So one minute you could be emotional. The next minute you could be just straight nasty. Nasty. And I don't know what's going to become of this show. I really don't. Because it's just in the gutter right now. You got Mia who has a husband and a boyfriend. It's just, you know what? It's the foolery that we practice in the world. And everybody want to look at, you know what? And I hate to bring this in, but he's consuming our life right now. Everybody want to give Diddy the side eye like he is the worst person in the world. And I'm not saying he's not bad. Well, honey, the foolery is going on. We just don't know about it. There's a lot of people that are sinister and messy. I think it is messy and reckless to be on the TV with a boyfriend and a husband and you got kids. Young kids. They, they, they say that the kids, they do as you do and not as you say a mess and thank god for the grand dame 
Because she said, shut this conversation down about the kids because at some point they're going to see it. She had to tell Andy, move on. There's a lot of people that did their thing last night. Give it up for the grand dog. She said, move on from this conversation. It's messed up. The kids are going to see it. And I said, look at, look at her. Because, this, you know, they, these reality shows, they are going gutter low. It's like all the way in the gutter. And it kills it. And, and, and Robin and Giselle, they must really just think the whole audience, we just straight stupid. I would have said, Robin, you get to ask no questions of my husband and your husband is not here. I'm going to need you to shut up. You questioning my husband more than you question yours. You got pictures, actual pictures of your husband in the laundry mat. Your husband got the receipt of him going down there paying for somebody's hotel bill. He told you to your face that the girl is gorgeous and you want to question my husband? Girl, have several seats. Go clean up your household. Just sweep a little bit. Just do a couple. Just sweep up a little bit. Before you want to come question my husband about some chick that says she was with him, she wasn't with him, and she was with him, and this, that, that, the other. Get out my face, Robin. <laughs> and Giselle, you talking about arrogant? Everybody told me not to do Michelle, but my dad told me to do it. And he said, because you're amazing and the people need to see you. You're amazing. The people need to see you. You're a former first lady of the church on a reality show acting a whole straight fool and you're amazing? Well, child, I hate to see what not amazing is. I really want them to do a reality show that shows just a little bit of integrity. We wonder why the streets is wild because if they represent was out there in the streets, God help us. Backstabbing, conniving, lying, gaslighting. In her fake relationship with Jason. Fake. 17 years younger than you. You know that man on what you, we have yet to see an authentic relationship after eight seasons with Giselle, not a one. On the Real Housewives of Potomac, we have not seen one authentic relationship with Giselle. Not a one. Your father sat up there and said he was sick of your uh, ex-husband, the father of your children. He said he was sick of him and all the kids he had. Even your father was sick of the shenanigans. Amazing? Girl will do better. She never has a storyline machine, like ever. Ever. Honey, but reunion part two woke me up. I can't wait to see what's going on with three. They had to throw out that lawsuit with, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Ashley's husband, and I'm so glad, threw it right on out the court. Ray said his boo Karen looked good with all her tweets. Sherman wasn't real. Sherman ain't want her either. I'm bringing y'all up in a minute. Sherman didn't want her either. No, he did not. And Sham, wasn't Sherman one year, he uh, 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 was standing in the doorway on the sidelines. He came to reunion. She got disrespected by every man up on that screen. Jason ain't one of was a joke. Y'all know what I need because I'm going to bring the people on in the building. Don't forget, hit that like button because we're going to get it in. Hit the like button. What do I need in that chat, people? I need a what? I need a choo-choo. 
Call aboard, everybody. It is Monday night, and it's time to recap the Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion Part 2, Season 8, and this was Episode 20. Chris cleared the room. Cleared the room. And he said he was done talking about it, period. Come on, Chris, shut it down. He told Andy he was good. Then you got Giselle and Robin sitting over there like they're entitled and that they're the queens of the show. Girl, bye. Robin sitting there, I never, I, I, I didn't know how to deal with, I never, you never dealt with colorism, Robin? Well, you should know the internet pulls the receipts. They don't pull mad receipts when she, allegedly, she don't think colorism, but she claimed when the show first started that nobody was going to connect to them because they was light-skinned. And she was happy when brown skin Monique joined the cast. But you don't deal with, you never dealt with colorism. You trying to tell us your whole entire life, Robin. You never dealt with colorism. That don't make no sense. The lies she tells. The lies. It's, you know, like Candy. The lies, the lies, the lies. Come on, on Gora receipts. There's receipts, receipts galore. Remember uh, uh, poor Katie? They, there wasn't a Robin and Giselle that said Katie wasn't black. They was questioning whether she was black, but she don't know what it's like to deal with colorism. Robin, the lies you tell. But they should rename that podcast, Reasonably Shady, Reasonably Liars. Cannot. I'm going to bring the people on in the building. Did y'all give me a choo-choo? I ain't seen no choo-choo out there. Passengers, did y'all purchase your ticket? Hit the like button. That's your ticket into the building. Hit the like button. I'm going to bring the people on in. Hey, in my opinion. The Don. Hey. What's going on, everybody? Emmanuel. Hello. Sebastian, Juanita, Katrina. Diva, you Hello. did this purposely to bring the panel on like this. What happened? Nothing, nothing. We, we're just going to leave it like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, choo-choo. We're choo -choo. ready to go. Okay. Buckle up. You knew. Okay. And Crystal, Christian, we're about to get uh -huh. into it. Hey. Well, I got so much to say. No. I was waiting on you all day. I was, it's my ah! birthday today. So well, happy like, birthday. Happy birthday. I'm glad I was waiting did. on you all day. I was utterly disgusted about what happened. I, I, Ooh, oh, my we God. We're going to get to you, honey. We're going to get to you. Yeah, we've we all been waiting. We're ready to talk. Yes. In my opinion, you could talk about any scene you want. Hit uh, it. Um. Hold okay. on, Crystal. I'm not up to okay. you yet. I'm not oh, up okay. to you. Sorry. No, okay. In my opinion, go ahead. So uh let's let's get the nice of these out the way. First of all, I think the gentleman came out nicely. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was all of my nice deeds. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, let me tell you something. The fact that Robin thought she had the audacity to ask another husband anything when her husband isn't here and her stuff was verified. And I do mean verified, okay? Verified. And you sat here, and you sat here and tried to make us feel like, oh, it was just, he went to the hotel. Baby, ain't nobody going to no hotel putting down their credit card for a woman they ain't banking. Let's be clear, okay? Exactly. Ain't nail no man doing that, okay? You knew your, if you want to stay with this dog and get up with fleas, that's fine. Don't tell us that it's raining outside. Why you peeing on us? I don't hear. Um, here's the thing. Giselle sat there and put on the war works about her daddy. Her daddy was the one that put all this colorist stuff into her head. And the mm -hmm. reason he didn't like Jamal is because he was a dark skinned man. Oh he my. wanted her to marry a white because he thought that was right. That's the same reason why every black person that he came across in Congress, he called out of their name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, don't, I don't respect none of them. I don't. I don't respect this show. Because one thing that Chris said that made a perfect sense is every time Candy say something, 
They tell her how wrong she is. And we sit here and we have to hear people say, oh, she got a nasty mouth. And oh, she do this. And she's disrespectful and she's dangerous. But this woman can sit up here and call out people husbands and say they made me go into a room. And then you could switch it up and say, my bad, I didn't mean that. He told, he asked me to go in the room with him. And it's okay. We're going to let it go. We ain't going to drag you for you misappropriating it, making this man lose his job. When you set up here and said he had his hand on somebody's booty, and we clearly see he ain't touched none of them girls. He didn't give them the time of day. He was still strolling through his phone. But y'all can say that. Y'all can put that out on him. Or y'all can say he texted me on my phone to get me to come to the hotel with him, knowing that he worked there. He was just seeing, seeing that y'all was out. And he sent y'all a direct message. Hey, y'all come party here. But we ain't gonna say nothing about that. But Candace got to be dragged. This miss me with that, okay? And let me tell you something. First of all, I don't understand how none of them have the right to fix their mouth to say anything by any of these other women. Y'all don't hold yourself accountable. When we had sat here the first time and asked, are we gonna hold ourselves accountable? Only thing Giselle and Robin said was, yeah, and I'm looking for some accountability. They didn't even say they were going to hold themselves accountable, so I wasn't even expecting no accountability. But here's the thing. I'm going to tell you this. Keep your mouth closed to dark-skinned women in if you can't understand our mouth, okay? We have to fight a little harder because we ain't got the light skin. <sighs> Ooh, thank you, in my opinion. Um, Dedon, you're up. Good evening, Saints and Aints. <clears throat> so the game is about to come yes, on, and nice I wanted to... Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to retroactively gather some things that were said last week, um, and I was in the chat, didn't have the time to come up. I wanted to mention some things about sexual harassment versus sexual assault okay uh oh okay giselle is a sexual harasser mm. let's not forget the amount of times she mentioned chris bassett's penis Ooh. did he ask for those things did he ask for her to mention that she wanted to see the color of his genitalia mm. You better teach the people. Whether it was black or white. That is called sexual harassment in the workplace. Mm. Lest we forget. But we seem to skim over that. But you know, sexual, sexual harassment does not have an end date on civil lawsuits. Okay. So I think Chris Bassett should go back and file a, a civil lawsuit on Giselle because he may have felt uncomfortable with him mentioning his penis on national television. Mm. I think he may have a case because it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it was several times that she mentioned his genitalia, that she wanted to see it but we seem to forget that oh. because, well, she, people. because he asked to go and speak to her. Mm. But I guess it's because of the way she looked. Uh, Rob, Robin, you're a fraud. Oh, shoot. Okay. You said none of us should uh, weaponize social media against one another. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's be clear. The Green Eye Bandits use their podcast to weaponize their speech against every last one of the other women on this show. They do it all the time. They've recently pulled up clips today of them uh, back in 20, like you all said, 2022, mentioning about getting a dark skinned woman on this show. Mm hmm. They, they talk about the other women. They, they say that, and we, we like to uh, put the scale on things, as Candace would say, move the line about what can be said on Twitter versus a podcast. They're both one and the same. Come on now. 
If Candace can't mention you on Twitter, you can't mention Candace on your podcast. You all drag Chris Bassett on the podcast about a woman who said that she met him, had DMs, and then later on recanted her entire story. Yet you get on this reunion and say, but she said, Han, this, that, and the third, but you have no questions for Juan. He uh -oh. can go. He can go. Put his debit card on a hotel room. Go to a laundromat where he is a coach at a D1 institution where there are laundromats on every other corner of the college. But he has to go to a laundromat to wash jerseys with an assistant coach. But you have no questions for him. Well, oh my goodness, it's going down tonight, y'all. Y'all buckle your seatbelts. Robin, uh -oh. sit down. Mm. In the words of Sophia Petrillo, picture it, August 7th, 2024. Oh Let's just imagine mm -hmm. if Wendy Osefo and Candace Diller Bassett dragged the colorism controversy on Giselle and Robin as hard and as furious as Giselle and Robin did Katie on season one of this show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's imagine that. Put that in the back of your heads. Oh, shoot. When they said, what, are your, what color are your kids going to check? You ain't no oh, Jew. Oh, I remember that. Come on now, talk to the people. Yeah, you Ooh. ain't no Jew. They don't like us. Mm. No one brought color up on this show but the Green Eye Bandits. Oh, my God. But we seem to forget. Mm -mm. Well, you reminding us tonight, you better talk to the people. It's the hypocrites, mm. First Lady Bryant. Mm. You sat Ooh. on the front row. Mm. And then you had the nerve. I'm coming back to get you, Giselle. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I I'm coming back to get you. Ooh. And then you all want to preach sisterhood when it came to Gordon. Uh -huh. Talking about it, it needs to be sisterhood. And you all should have contacted, you know, uh, Mia when it came to Gordon about that husband. Well, what happens with the other husbands? Oh. When Giselle plots and plans and schemes against the other husband, where's the sisterhood then? Mm. Where's the accountability then? Do Ooh. you check on the, uh, am I my sister's keeper then? Mm. Do you check on your sister then? When the leader is, is doing this to, to your sister's husband over and over, season after season? Where's the sisterhood? Mm. Now let's go back and get whole tale Giselle. Oh, oh my goodness. Woo. Giselle does weaponize her daughters. Mm. Anytime somebody doesn't say anything, is an issue. Yeah. Yet you can mention everybody else's family and it's never an issue. Mm -hmm. Giselle always, Giselle has been found to be a pathological liar. Woo! Just on this uh, season, um, uh, episode one of the reunion. That's facts. That's facts. When she says she did not say he made her go into the room. Mm -hmm. Play the tape. They played it. Mm -hmm. She did say it. And you can tell she's lying when she's real fidgety. Yep. All over, yeah. keep pulling her dress, mm -hmm. keep uh, all over her hands. She's a pathological liar. And then she said the inner Giselle came out after she was being the first lady. So that means you were sitting on that front, front row with all that hate malice and get back in your heart was that because your husband was allegedly sleeping to and fro wall to wall uh pillar to post with all the women in the empowerment temple in baltimore maryland good god i wasn't ready Woo! oh my gosh 
Are y'all ready out there? You better tell it to done. Oh my God. Okay, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. And NECA, be ready. You're next on the block. Oh my God. Because you were asking Giselle too many questions. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened to Wendy. When she asked Giselle about how she dressed, the very next season she was up on the block and so was Eddie. Mm -hmm. So be prepared for next season. And for those in the chat that said that Giselle's dad did not say that, let's go back to 1966 when he was running against Senator Barbara Jordan. And it was two Republicans and two uh, Democrats. And Senator Barbara Jordan was the leading Democrat. He called her an aunt your mama. Mm. Is in the papers. Oh, my God. It's not made up. So this is a lineage of colorism. In the museum now. It's a lineage. Mm -hmm. It's a pathology. Oh my gosh. Of white is right. Oh my. So before we get up here and coddle this first lady mm -hmm. of God's holy church. Oh my goodness. Let's make sure we set the story straight. Mm. Of the sexual harassment. Well, well. The colorism. Mm -hmm. That is in her family. That if she doesn't cut off right now, we'll go to her daughters. Because they see what's happening with their mother. Mm. So that's all I'm going to say right now. I'm going to mute myself because the game is about to come on. But well, we appreciate you. You done did the whole sermon. <laughs> Somebody passed the plate. Done did a whole sermon. Can the church say amen? These are facts that were spilled. Facts. Amen. Come on now. Facts, people. Facts. This ain't us picking a side. This ain't us disliking somebody or liking this one over the other one. This is facts. The facts will lay down. You better send this to, to Andy Cohen. Because he punked out last night. Chris even shut him down. Mm-hmm. E, you're up. Um, testing. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, boo. I'm going to get my water because I need water now. Go ahead. Well, first, let me say I can I can totally understand why the grand um have one too many drinks in a night because she must have been exhausted from being in charge of the girls and I don't mean just the housewives I'm including Andrew in that as well uh Diva you kind of touched on it Karen was the only one with enough sense to tell not only Wendy Ashley Candace and Mia to stop talking about the paternity of that child they were talking about him like a piece of bacon and she but Karen also got Andrew together. You stopped talking about it too, and she was spot on. And after I recovered from that, I had to put on my glasses and rewind the first 20 minutes over again. And only then did I realize it was too many useless women on that stage. Um, and not only is it too many women on the stage, but there's too many women up there who don't want to be housewives. And I'm calling out Wendy, I'm calling out Giselle, I'm calling out Robin, Aneka, and Ashley. They all want Andrew's job. These girls want to host and interview other housewives and ask the questions. They don't want to tell their own stories. They just want to be messy and get their check. They're playing in our face is what they're doing. They want to watch the show just like the rest of us. At one point, Andrew said Wendy got her little talk show. And she's giving me notes. And Mia said, well, yeah, maybe you and uh, Wendy should switch seats. And Andy said, yeah, I would love that. But even though he said yes, he was shaking his head no. These girls are not in their proper lane. And this configuration of women does not work for what they're trying to do. Um, now that we are in uh, part two, I can definitely see why Mia got first share. Every question that Andrew asked of Mia, Mia answered it. She was not combative. She did not raise her voice and she did not retreat. She owned the fact she cheated on Gordon. 
She owned the fact she was a mistress to Gordon during his previous marriage. And she owned the fact that her fiance thinks uh, Gordon's son is his. She even took the side questions from Robin. Robin asked, where are you living? Mia said in DC. Aneka asked, was Gordon going to anger management? Mia answered that. Really, Mia made all of those other women on that stage look like poo because they all lack substance. Wendy wants to be all in Mia's marriage, but when uh, Wendy, what, the thing that kept coming to my mind was she never let the cameras film her and unhappy Eddie when he was caught liking the pictures of those Instagram thoughts. Remember, that's why she was upset with Giselle and Robin anyway, because Wendy became a patient and underwent plastic surgery to mirror the bodies. Remember that her husband liked based upon his Instagram history. And I will not call her Dr. Wendy. I will refer to her as patient Wendy and be clear, patient Wendy is still thirsty because as soon as Mia said, Ink likes Wendy the most out of all the other women, what's the next thing we heard? Where is Ink? Ink has good taste for the Godiva Diva. She's dehydrated and she's thirsty. You're a whole married woman. Your husband is backstage. What are we doing here? Wendy is all in Mia's relationships, but I want to know what kind of conversation did she have with her own unhappy husband back when that was going on with the Instagram. And then the thing with Robin, because they're all mirroring each other because they don't have real storylines. Robin, when you met, um, not when you met Juan, but when you and Juan were going through all of that unscrupulous and uh, those excursions around Baltimore, how come you didn't let the cameras film that? And as for Ashley, your man, has a gag order out. You're rubbing his feet every night, making it seem like, you know, at the beginning she portrayed to us at the um the beginning of the season, the divorce was pending. She's doing her own thing. And then she told us he sent a cease and desist so he would not appear on film. These ladies don't want to call the real thing what it is because if you are pending divorce, you're seeing other people, how the hell are you rubbing his feet every night? They're all disingenuous. They're playing in our face. Like we're unintelligent. And unlike Dr. Wendy, which I won't even call her Dr. Patient Wendy, I didn't need to get four degrees to learn how to catch the bullfish. I'm clocking these inconsistencies one right after the other. And I don't even want to get into Giselle's father except for the one part where she said when she they were giving out daddy, she felt like she got the best one. She loved her dad and her dad loved her. I'll leave it at that. My second to last thing, my problem with Candace and Wendy versus Giselle and Robin is that Candace and Wendy stay losing. Yeah, Candace and Wendy stay losing. Yes, Giselle and Robin are dishonest. They are shallow and they are mean. Okay. I give you all of that, but Candace is mentally and emotionally unstable. The girl can't stop crying for longer than two seconds. Candace is manipulative and Candace is a mean girl too. And then you put that together with patient Wendy, who is insecure, attention-seeking, and dishonest. Nobody out of these four ladies has clean hands, not one of them. But when it comes to this colorism issue, I'm going to stand 10 toes down. There is no colorism issue. If all the brown girls said last year that the light-skinned girls aren't colorists, what are we talking about here? I'm rolling with that. Ain't no colorism. But what I do know is that the narrative has been consistently spun that Candace refers to her um, her castmates as B-words and H's. Her castmates thinks that she is aggressive. And I do know that she's called them roaches and vermin. I know Candace threatened folks with knives. She's baited them into physical altercation. She's her uh, racial slurs and call her uh, castmates everything under the book. So yeah, Candace is aggressive. And as a black woman, no other black woman will tell me not to label aggressive behavior as aggressive. Stop playing with yourself. Candace is always bringing up color. Just, I know uh, the Dom so eloquently put that out there and he's right. Giselle did mention color. And I remember when they said that they had light skin privilege. I remember that. And I, so I'm not diminishing that. But in this particular instance, because Candace wasn't on the show then, but She's the one bringing up color the most nowadays, calling people white looking and privileged. And I mean, the, even that word roach and bed winches, those, those are rooted in colorism as well. And if that wasn't enough, I, it's still at the top of my mind where she just said on some interview, I don't want a light skinned baby. This girl is color struck. And she's screaming out for help. And she doesn't know what to do with herself because she thought her 
and Wendy were going to be able to ride this thing. So the wheel fell off and it's not looking good. I know that some people are going to be against me, but that is what I'm saying. And to wrap it all up, <laughs> um, I do believe Robin when she says she felt uncomfortable due to those allegations because I do I can see how that can make someone feel uncomfortable. And I do believe Robin was hurt because she thought her and Candace were real friends. I believe that. And God forgive me if I am wrong. If Robin was faking and those were all fake tears, she's a very good actress because I believe her. I believe every single word she said. And I believe her when she said she was never accused of being colorist before for some reason. I believe that. Do Robin and Giselle probably recognize they get pretty privileged? Hell yes, they do. But we cannot help the eye color we were born with or our skin color. And last thing, Chris Bassett, I wasn't impressed. Um, every time they brought up those screenshots of his brown private part from his DM, he couldn't provide a logical response. He kept saying he didn't meet the woman. He never said he never sent the woman pictures. So wait a minute. Candace and Chris know all about the business that Giselle and Robin are talking about behind the paywall, but Candace cannot get to the bottom of Chris and his DMs, and she's sleeping in the same bed with him every night. Candace and Chris were gaslighting the cast, and why nobody clocked that is beyond me. I, I know that woman was not credible. Oh, well, yeah, he sent me this and this and third, and then I lied, and then she came back, and then she recanted. But the fact of the matter is, where did those screenshots come from? And is that your private part in the picture? Because I know you have seen it. Uh, second to last thing. This is my very last thing. I'm sorry, I'm wrapping it up because this just came to me. When none of the men wanted to address Juan not showing up to the reunion, what more confirmation do you need that men will defend men even when they are wrong, because flat out Juan is doing Robin wrong. And in the midst of the men defending each other, the women are sitting there tearing each other down. It's something wrong with this visually. And especially that Eddie, he couldn't wait to get in the confessional with Wendy on that finale and air Mia out. And Wendy said it there on the episode last night, Gordon was vicious. But where was Gordon sitting? He was right behind Mia. And the fact that Gordon is divorcing Mia and he is still sitting there behind her and he showed up to the reunion while Juan and Robin are newlyweds again. They're still in the honeymoon phase and he's not there. What's up with that? Gordon and Mia made Juan and Robin look like the bottom of their shoe. And for real, the only man who I think could have told the truth on Juan not showing up is Michael Darby because he already said Juan didn't want to get married and Juan doesn't want Robin. They need to recast this thing because it's too many useless bodies on the stage and they're not telling the truth. Amen. You're muted. Oh, in the words of Katrina, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you. KG, you're up. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a lot. <laughs> um, I almost don't even know where to start, you know, coming after the dawn and E, but good night, everyone. <laughs> um, all right. I, I do think it was really sad that it took Karen to say, let's move on. And mm -hmm. the baby will see this con will see this show. And it doesn't even seem like Mia even thought of that, you know, which makes me really question her as a mother and the fact, and G too, that they would even put this on the show. That child is old enough to watch TV, to read, you know, he is absolutely gonna see all this nonsense. Um, if this is the storyline that Mia plans on going with next season, I, I pray for them kids. Um, I kept forgetting that Ashley and NECA was there, but so I don't really have much to say about them, but, um, Karen, why did she keep doing that with her mouth? It, it was just real strange. I, I, I couldn't stop looking at how she kept twisting her mouth up and, it just looked real strange, but um, with Giselle, okay, with her and the whole Chris thing, I, I can completely understand her feeling uncomfortable. And I think most people could probably get behind her feeling uncomfortable. 
you're in a room with a married man, the door is closed. Where she loses me, I think where she loses a lot of people is that instead of saying that she was uncomfortable, she said, he made me uncomfortable. But then she couldn't follow it up with how or what he did to make her uncomfortable. She has every right to feel that way. She can be uncomfortable. Um, but the fact that he, she was putting it on him, that he made her. Um, Robin is, I agree, she's a complete fraud. And she had a nerve to be asking Chris anything when her husband had been missing all season. Um, I do appreciate, though, that Candace did not carry on and while out the way we've seen her in previous reunions, I think it kind of showed that she was pretty much over it. And um, she even at one point had said she's out. Um, so I think at that point she had already decided to not return and it's better off. But overall, um, I'm really disappointed in a lot of these reality shows. And I like you, Diva. I am just really tired of just the tearing down each other, you know, and it's like they're on a race to the bottom to see who can say the worst stuff, who can dig the lowest, who can cut the lowest, who can, you know, verbally tear each other down the worst. And it's just really disgusting. And I, it's sad because us as a people, um, I don't know if they realize or if Bravo, well, we know Bravo and the Bravo executives, Andy, they don't care what this is doing to us as a community. Oh, no. They could care less mm -hmm. about what this is doing. And this is becoming a norm. You know, this is on all of these reality shows now. Um, the, the, what's some, the basketball wives, the love and hip hop, all that crap. And it's becoming normal to treat each other so poorly, to speak to each other. Now it's all about the read, you know, who can read the best, who's gonna, you know, tear down the other person the best, you know, and then they're applauded for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I, I, I'm at a point where I am, I will not, absolutely not be watching next season, uh, regardless of who is on the show. And I'm really just looking at, broadly all of the reality shows that I watch and I am really going to just take a, a second look like you know and start to eliminate some of them if they're not really bringing me they're not you know edifying me in any way or my people then I'm not going to support them and I think that's part of the problem we've been supporting Bravo for a long time this is what's normal this is what they've come to expect us to want. So mm -hmm. this is what they're giving us. And I, I think it's not going to change until we all just kind of boycott them. And, and I certainly will be. Yeah, it, it, it is very sad. It's very sad what's going on. You know, no matter what you, you know, I feel about any given cast member, I will say this. Um, they're all messy. But for sure, the playing field is not even for Candace and Wendy as it is for the others, right? And prime example, like um, Chris said last night, he said, it's funny how one individual can say, I misspoke, I said the wrong word, and life goes on, and it moves on. But Candace needs therapy, she needs to be talked to, she got to go to HR, all kinds of stuff because she needs to watch her words, but you can clearly have somebody sit there and tell lies, proven lies, proven lies, and it's just brushed over and all as well. That's some nonsense. And you, it was clearly saw so last night. I don't care how Giselle wants to explain the whole Chris thing. We got to be extremely clear. You alluded to the fact when you said he made me feel uncomfortable. Like, wow, you know this man. He's not a perfect stranger. Was there another time where he did something to you? So now this time you're feeling, and you're saying 
He knew your hotel room was empty. Well, you knew it more than him. So why did you agree to say, let's have this conversation in your empty hotel room? It doesn't make sense to me. So you wanted to tear him down like you do every other husband on the show, like you did with Chris, Monique's husband, and you want to come with security. You want to act like you thought this big black man was going to beat you down. And, and I got to say, Chris didn't seem like that way at all. On a consistent, regular basis, those two have torn down marriages, and that's why Robin is not seeing success with her husband right now, Juan. He appears on TV like he doesn't even like her. Forget about love. If he liked you, he would show up to the reunion. It's a couple of hours. Take the hit because we're getting a big check. But he don't even like you. Juanita, you're up. Ooh. I'm still uh, 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 digesting the the, the dawns uh, and E. Wait, wait, and, and hold on a second. I hear you. You said Chris Jam, you threatened to stomp up. There's security on the set. There's cameras. You brought that extra security because you wanted this drama and you wanted this nonsense. And you wanted Monique off the show and her husband because you don't have one. Continue, Juanita. As far as Giselle and Robin and, and this, uh, the privileges and all, it goes back to the old saying, and if you're white, you're right, you're brown, hang around, when you're black, get back. And mm -hmm. this is what they saying about uh, Candace and Wendy, telling them to get back because Giselle, Robin, Ashley, even sometimes Karen, they're the ones who is the show. That's the, but it, it, it's not right. Uh, I admire Chris for how he stood up for his wife and how he would not uh, let them take him to a place to get him out of character. Candace, I felt sorry for her because she so much wants Giselle and Robin to like her, and she so much wants to be their friend that she would just do anything to try to stay in their cor corner and they're just jealous uh giselle don't have a man she don't have a husband robin have a husband her marriage is doomed mia is a tramp so you know when they look at the marriages that are concrete they don't know how to react to them or how to accept them so it's just a mess and 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 i hope they get it together Giselle, I do feel like she needs to be gone. Uh, and if she don't watch her step, she will be, you know, because um, you're not indispensable as you think you are. Because Andy Cohen would definitely throw you under the bus if he gets enough complaints. So I digress. Thank you. I appreciate you. Sebastian, you're up. <sighs> Okay, good evening, everyone. Good morning as well, because some people may be watching us from other parts of the world, as may, as the Chronicles of the Gray Hair Divas channel is worldwide, <laughs> and we have people from all over the world. Okay. What you see, you see how he's softening it up before he started, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I could. I could. It's going to be soft. It's going to be soft. I love every one of you guys. I may love some more, but I love each and every one of you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, what we saw last night was an interesting, was very interesting, was a, an interesting view of certain things. Um, I agree with my sis E when she mentioned about Mia being open and honest. That is very true. From the beginning, Mia has always been open and honest about her past, even though she's, she's given a little, she added a little spice to it. She got it a little lies to it. Then whenever it came time for the reunion, that's when she would clarify all her things. We can give that to Mia. That's, that's very true. And uh, I found it very disrespectful of Wendy Osefo, a professor of education at the John Hopkins School of Education. So therefore, she's very much well known on the impacts of certain conversations and things can have on children. Because as you know, education, you do learn about children from primary 
to secondary and to university and etc. I found it very disrespectful and very wrong. Actually, not disrespectful. Disrespectful is too much of a light word. It was just so wrong how um, she brought up the whole G thing about the the whole child. I was like, no, Wendy, that that was not that was not the moment, not the place for it. You knew damn well. Oh, you knew damn well. You know damn well that that was not that was not it. You should have never brought that up. You were saying how you didn't call you didn't call Mia at all because you were kind of a little wanted to respect her even after G was calling her all types of names about a child of God, but yet you invoked a situation that has to do with a child of God, a child in this current moment onto the reunions, onto the reunion where everyone will see, because we all know the reunion view, re ratings are way higher than the actual show ratings mm -hmm. where the world will see. So this kid, I think his name is Jeremiah. Let me not call him this kid. Jeremiah, We'll see this from, from, from this day on, well, from yesterday to the rest of his life, this will be available for him. Mm -hmm. And you know this, you are a professor of education. I expected better from you, especially when you come from so-called an accredited and prestigious university that does a lot of research on children we have to give their credit. They they do a lot of research on kids. John Hopkins. They're very well known for that. It was just it was gross. Um, back to Karen. Karen, I don't like her. Y'all know the whole DUI thing, but this was prior to it. She was right. She was right. She checked Andy well. She was like, let's move on from it. Candace isn't innocent either in that situation as well. Karen brought up, let's move on. The baby will have to see this. We, we, we let's move on. Let's get away from this. Mia was absolutely wrong for not trying to stop this conversation from happening about her child. I felt that was very wrong of Mia. And it gave me, it made me question some things about her kids in the household. Well, her treatment of her kids in the household, not, not the kids. Her, her, it made me question a lot because I would have stopped this conversation if I was her. But you know, that's not what happened. Robin... Robin has no, Robin, I don't like you, but we, we're going to have to talk about it. You had no credit. You had no right to start talking about talking to Chris. I don't like Chris. Everyone knows this. You had no right to start talking about Chris about no um, screenshots and et cetera. That was so wrong. That was so wrong. You had no right there. That was no place. Let's go to Chris and Candace. The Don, I love you, but we have to talk about some things. Okay. The Don, who's right above me, I mentioned about Giselle bringing up Chris's genitalia. Well, we can definitely talk about it because last time I checked, it was his wife that brought up his genitalia in the beginning when she said, oh yeah, my husband's white, but he acts black. His penis is, bl is brown. That's what she said on national television. And it became a whole storyline for that season. And then later on, when they went to the Chesapeake Bay, when they were in the Sprinter, if we really want to talk about SH, we can really talk about it, where people were like, do you want to see it? And then he was unbelt, he was unfastening his belt, not seatbelt, unfastening his belt. And then his wife had to interject and told him, no, 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 no. You're making Wendy feel uncomfortable. Are, are, are we sure we want to go there? We can definitely go there on the topic of SH. We can go there. Um, we do not want to, the thing is, we need to call it like it is. Yes, there is colorism on this cast. I know some people have mentioned that. My sis has mentioned it, but she's probably going to agree with what I'm going to say. There is colorism on this cast, and the colorism comes from Candace Dillard Bassett's mouth. Candace is very problematic. Y'all said, oh, she needs to have, Diva, I'm talking for you, not y'all. Diva mentioned how she, oh, we had to have a conversation with it. Yes, we do need to have a conversation with HR. Candace is reckless with her mouth when she talks about people's, um, she talked about Ashley being a slave to Michael. She's called people roaches. She's almost thrown a knife. She's all, she threw a knife at Ashley. It just didn't hit her. That's good. She, she, she's called, she's been saying a lot of problematic stuff and it's become a pattern. Even 
The first person to go to HR about Candace was Karen, one of her faves. Then we don't know if Ashley went to HR behind closed doors, but we do know for sure. Well, we don't know for sure, but most likely Giselle did because she said y'all didn't talk to her yet. So yes, Candace is very problematic. And I'll say this, Giselle, I don't like her. I don't like her, but I can acknowledge that yeah, her father probably her father did say those things. Not probably, he did say those things. But we have to acknowledge this, guys. We are now in the time of wokeness, where we're all woke, and we've acknowledged the past and the words that we say in the past, the words that we have said. And trust me, I'm not defending what this man has said. But this was in 1966, guys. This was in 1966 when civil rights was about was around the time of being given. Um, we were fresh out of segregation and stuff. And, you know, some people still had some colorist sentiments. That's very true. That is very true. But we should not weaponize. We shouldn't weaponize parents against their children. So Kurt, um, Curtis Graves' actions don't necessarily have to be passed down to Giselle. And she shouldn't have to get hate for it. She shouldn't. She absolutely should not. And I know some people talked about their um her daughters. Um, yes, Candace and Wendy did make those faces. That is very true. And then Wendy was proven to be a bold-faced liar when she said, Oh, I asked, I, I was I was so happy. I congratulate Giselle. I asked her if Grace is gonna be an AKA. And she was like on camera and everything. And then because you know, Wendy don't talk to Giselle unless it's off on camera. Um, then then she was like, Y'all have it, and then Andy's like, wait, they're telling me in my ear. No, we don't have nothing. No such thing exists. You were proven to be a bold-faced liar. Okay? It is completely, completely insane the way these fans are. Yes, I love Ashley. That is very true. But I, I can acknowledge what she's doing wrong. And right now, <sighs> Ashley, I love you, but you can't be massaging this man's foot. You can't. You can't. You can't. I love you. I I love you, Ashley, but mm -mm. I may have to go into your comments later, but you can't be doing this. No. And that's thank it. You. Thank you, Sebastian. Kerry, thank you. Hey, uh, uh, hey. Uh, yeah, I'll come um, back to you. One second. Uh, Kerry, thank you so much for the super sick. I truly appreciate it. Um, go ahead, Dadon. Hey, Brother Sebastian, just one quick question. You just mentioned that we should not weaponize what parents say towards their children, but all season we have weaponized what Wendy's mother said towards Wendy. I'll put myself back on mute. Okay, we did not weaponize what Wendy's mother said. We had a conversation, ne and NECA had a conversation about Wendy's mom calling and threaten and threatening her to her cousin. That's what happened. And she wanted to talk to Wendy about that situation. That is a whole different thing. I got to go to Emmanuel. Sebastian. Yes, please move on to my brother Emmanuel. Thank you. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Love you, the dawn. Thank you, Diva, because I've been jumping out my seat. Uh -huh. So... I will say, I think part two was really good. I would argue it was better than part one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so sorry about Giselle's dad, who was not perfect, like none of us are, but he fought for the people. He was actually part of the solution when it came to civil rights. And like I said last time, he made history because he became one of the first members of color in the great state of Texas. So I want to put that out there. Candace... I criticized her last week because she's very immature and she's problematic on social media. But I, what I have always said and what I will continue to say is that beyond her recklessness, she does have a good and pure heart because it takes a good person with a good heart to not only sympathize, but to empathize with someone, even if you're not getting along with them. So I thought the fact that she was crying when Giselle was talking about that, um, I, I, I think it said a lot. Robin looked ridiculous, and Robin, you looked horrible talking and questioning someone's husband when yours is hiding somewhere. Not cool. But what I will agree on her is on is this. So I'm confused, Candace. So just because someone didn't answer you on an Instagram gives you the right to harass and drag them on social media? I don't know about that. Then Mia. She's a mess. She is crazy, but she's the most interesting person sitting up on that couch. 
y'all know I am traditional. I believe in the traditional role, man, woman. But I want to see every second of this thruple. It looks like something really interesting that we don't really see much on TV. So it would be interesting to see how they navigate that. Um, NECA, beautiful. That woman is beautiful. Her and her husband are royalty. I love the way NECA was trying to move the conversation. And she was even asking some hard questions to the ladies, trying to fix things, trying to be a mediator. Um, so she was you know, definitely trying there to help them. Finally, I want to talk about the thirstiest person on this show, Wendy. And I'm going to take a line from E. Last week, she called her that hating, dehydrated Wendy. I did not see the four degrees come out, as some of y'all claim. Look at the way Wendy was looking at NECA and Ike when the men came out. She was looking at them with so much hate, so much vitriol. I don't know if it was jealousy. I don't know what it is, but it's embarrassing. Also, she's a liar, a big liar. Y'all want to call Giselle and Robin liars? Well, then put Wendy in that basket. They are the real liars of Potomac. She has been caught in so many lies this season pertaining to her sister, LeBay, her mom, and she lied last night. She claimed that she asked Giselle if her daughter was going to be a uh, AKA, but guess what? They didn't find the clip because it never happened. And I'm glad that they said that it didn't exist because she was, she is a liar. And let me tell you what else she's lying about. So Andy asked Mia, who reached out to you, right? And Mia says, everyone except Wendy and Candace. Wendy wants to say, oh, well, you threw some water at me. So she's bringing up something that happened 2,500 years ago. But here's my question, Wendy. Didn't you go out of your way to grab Mia, pull her to the side, and said to her, let's make up, Mia. Let's start fresh. Back in that pickleball event when Neko was dragging you, or did everyone else just get amnesia? Also, Wendy, since you have so many degrees and you're so smart, please get with the program and stop comparing your mother's plastic surgery to a man getting surgery in his brain. His brain. Stop it. And one more thing, because Wendy tried to do a little something talking about people who have the range. All I'm going to say is charity starts at home, and I'm going to leave it at that. And then last thing, as far as Chris Bassett, not a fan of him. He's rude. He's disrespectful. He makes people uncomfortable. Now, y'all saying he came through. I disagree, but if y'all want to say that, oh, oh, that's fine. It's a nice way to exit stage left. Goodbye, Chris. I hope you get a job because Candace can't continue to provide for you without the Bravo check. Get off the vodka. Oh, my. Get off the vodka. I love you. I love you. Can I? Katrina, you're up. Can you hear me, Diva? Yes, I can. Okay, let's get this started. Okay, let's talk about Robert. Robin. Sorry, she's a liar. She's a manipulated uh, person. She knew she was lying. She's and then uh, with the situation with Chris. First of all, how you know that was that man penis? You talking about from a screenshots? Have you ever seen his penis? And then why is it all of a sudden you asking about these questions and Giselle said, leave me out of it because it's something that you plotted. The second thing uh, with uh, saying Wendy is thirsty, Wendy is not thirsty, Wendy did not lie because if you go back and they found it on the internet where Wendy did congratulate Giselle daughter for being asking if she's going to be an AKA. So she did not lie on that. The uh, second thing, the third thing of um, with Candace. Everybody don't handle their situations the right way. Some cry, some get mad. So I guess if she was acting mad and all rowdy, she'd be talked about again. But because she cried with her emotions is how she expressed herself, that's a problem? I don't think so. And then the thing with me, with bringing up the child, you saying uh, Wendy brought up the child. First of all, Gordon and Mia both brought up the child when they were discussing the, la and the finale. So this child is going to see exactly what they said before you can get to the reunion. And Giselle is a colorist. And her dad was a colorist, too. Yeah, he did a lot of good things. So did uh, Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King also was a cheater. So, and then by being in the 60s, therefore, he should have never even used the racial slur because of what all black people was already going through. So that should have never even been said. 
And plus, she was a woman. Okay. Whew, yeah, I'm getting hot here. Hold on. Let me, let me slow down. <laughs> because I don't see the logic. It's colorism there. Y'all want to say that uh, Wendy's lying? Wendy's is not a liar. Giselle is a liar. When Candace was crying for her father, this woman didn't even have a heart to even appreciate that. Come on. Be for real. That girl was not faking that. She was not faking it. And I'm happy that Chris stood up for his wife. Maybe if Robin was married, her husband would have, well, her so-called husband would have came and stood up for her. Because he left you out to dry. And I don't know what you want to be with a man anyway that said you make his skin crawl. You couldn't say not one word to me. And you said it on TV. So she with that little dry wig that she had on was looking a fool. Trying to call somebody else's husband out when your husband ain't even there to debate anything that people have to ask about him because he didn't even show up for you. So when they want to come for Wendy, Candace, and so on, they need to come a little harder. Because everything that Wendy said was the truth. And furthermore, Andy, he's a punk. Because you allow, you protect Giselle by any means necessary. And that's sad. Because she's going to be the one, or she is the one, that's bringing down that show. Until you get her right, until because you put her in that seat, that was strategic. Everybody know what you're doing. You read that Essence uh, magazine. You only saw her there. She knew what was up. Ain't nobody no fool. And if y'all fall for that, something is wrong with y'all. He saw her there to be strategic because everybody was talking about her. That's why he did it. And Mia is a mess. You on TV with another man. You still married. And they're saying that Wendy, I mean, Mia is an MVP. No. You is a H-O-R-E, which I'm not going to say the word. Because you degrading your kids on TV. There's nobody else doing that. You're doing that. You the one showing your kids that you can have you with a man, sleeping with another man, but you still stand with their father. You doing that. Nobody's doing that. Wendy's not doing that. Candace's not doing that. She's doing it. And by bringing it on the TV, she brought it on the TV because she brought that situation on the TV. That's all I got to say because I'm getting hot behind my neck. I, 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 I got to get out. Ooh, listen, let, 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 me, let me say this. If there's jealousy on the cast, it's amongst them all. It's amongst them all. And if I had to put somebody on the lower end of that, I would say Karen. So they were jealous when um, Wendy's husband announced that in six months they made $2 million. Did y'all see the other side of the couch? Because if y'all didn't, y'all better go back and look at it again. He didn't and say $2 million. Oh, what? He didn't say $2 million. He said $2 million sales. They sold $2 million pet rollies. Whatever okay, well, it was. Whatever. They, whatever they sold, the, the other side of the couch was jealous. The look on, on Robin and Giselle's face. So even if it wasn't $2 million, $2 million whatever, it was jealousy. So there's a lot of jealousy going on back and forth between everybody. Everybody is messy. It's a whole hot mess and nobody hands is clean. And for sure, Andy protects Giselle because when, when Chris cleared the room, Andy didn't know and what to say after Chris clearly said he should have addressed it. Why is it that one person can say, I missed the, I miss said a word or whatever the case may be, right? I miss said a word. And, and we, we let that go. We move on. But Candace gets reprimanded for every word that comes out of her mouth. God forget, forgive if she misspeaks. She's done. Giselle can come back and get to tell HR and everybody else that the only reason why she was getting said threats is because of what Candace said. I highly doubt that she never got a threat before that. Because these, these fans are unhinged. Unhinged. There was a lot of people that was mad when Monique left the show. She never got any hate mailed in. I, I, I just doubt that. Diva, I'd agree with you. I agree with you on that. But do you also know that like not fans are unhinged, but they also are um, triggered by their um, 
I don't um their leader. And I remember um there was this blogger <laughs> that Candace wished unaliving upon and said a whole bunch of stuff. And then within a week or two, I think he 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 I know you keep going back to that. Yeah. And then again, he was talking about their children. So but it's not okay, Katrina. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't even want to circle back to that because that thing, that whole situation is very loaded. Is very loaded. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, come on, Lawson, I hear you. And that's exactly that, right? And it's loaded, but I really don't want to speak upon it because he's no longer here, but he was sick, right? So, and, and if it if it was as simple as someone wishing someone was gone and they would leave, like like I don't, I'm not even going to go down that particular road. But there are a lot of individual content creators. I mean, not content creators, uh, uh, reality stars that they pay some of these bloggers. They pay some of these bloggers to say things against their fellow um people. And it's getting so messy now. It used to be a little bit cleaner. You have the content creators. They watch the show. They get to say their true feelings. They say what they say. Everybody go about their way into next week's show. But now you have some content creators that are being paid. So they muddy the waters. And it becomes reckless. And they and, and you have others where there's one show where the person just just gives the people to, to just do the wildest things, and these people literally do it. They literally do it, and it's very reckless. Um, Catalina Diva, we're not connected today. My love is Emmanuel E and Sebastian delivered. I'm an Afro um, Colombian woman. I know I know colorism. Candace and Wendy are just BSing. I mean, the thing is, I appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. And yeah, we don't have to always connect. I appreciate your super chat. But to say one person knows colorism over another, that's that's over my head. That's over my head. To say one person knows colorism over another, let me say this. And I'm not saying that this is so. But let me tell you this. If you want to know somebody who really does with well, colorism, you, you speak to a dark-skinned person. I have family members that was called Blackie, you black as night, this, that, that, and the other. And if we want to call it, I'm going to let you in the building one second, Mel. If we want to call it a coincidence, call it whatever, but it, 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 it kills me that, you know, it just so happened that all the people on that cast that have skillet, come on, newbie and mahogany, all of these people that happen to be of a darker complexion are always the problematic ones on the show. Monique Brownskin, she was problematic, according to the others. Candace and Wendy, problematic. Necker didn't realize she fell into a whole setup because Ashley started the mess and it's all on Necker, problematic. And then these two girls wasn't even smart enough to join forces. They are becking and plucking at each other. And I'm talking about NECA and Wendy. And then at the end of the day, they're still bidding for these girls' attention. Giselle was straight nasty. Straight nasty on reunion. But she's nasty every reunion. She sits there and when she gets caught in her lies, she tries to blame it on other people. She was nasty. So when Candace cries, she's being fake, phony, and everything else. But when Robin cries and Giselle cries, they're genuine. Their, their, their tears are real. They're really emotional. They're really going through it. If Candace sheds a tear, she is phony, fake, and she's a fraud. I have some people in my life, they are just straight up emotional. They cry when they upset. They cry when they happy. They cry when they mad. They, pry, they cry when they can't just jump up out of their seat and choke somebody. But when she cries, oh, here she go, her fake tears. She cries even when it, Giselle just told a whole story, emotional story about her dad. 
Candace is crying and she turns off her emotions about her dad to say once again that Candace is a fake. She cries even when the story ain't about her. It's grief. The look on her face that she did. That the, ain't the grief, hate, that's evil. The, it that's was hate. evil and it's hateful. The that hateful part. look that she gave Candace when she looked over there, she crying about your daddy. You should have some some compassion for her for doing that. Anyway, did oh. you did I skip you, Juanita? No, 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 no. You didn't. I just jumped in. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you, no, you're fine. You're fine. I just want to make sure I didn't skip you. Mel, you're up. Well, Diva, first of all, I'm. I, I hold have... on, hold on, hold on one second. Yeah. What Maybe happened? I guess you don't come around here much, Ooh. but don't we? We I do not like to take oh, the no. conversation yeah. low in the gutter over here. Oh, that no. is the ridiculous, a ridiculous statement because I don't know a black person in this world that doesn't have so many mixed colors in their family. Mm -hmm. That is just ridiculous. Oh, no. Ridiculous. In my own family, the color range goes from cocoa to vanilla to butter pecan. It's all over the map. So to say that we just don't like light-skinned people over here is just dumb. It's stupid. And I'm saying that. It's I think it's a bot diva because it's repeating. Okay. Go, go ahead, Mel. Well, because uh, if it wasn't about, I was going to say they just proved a point about colorism right there. I'm like, what in the world? What is going on with this? But um, mm -hmm. you know what? I had to be to be perfectly honest. Like I said in the chat, I was not going to call in because I did not see the episode. But I wanted to say about um, Giselle, I feel from what I'm hearing tonight, I feel like basically she's a coward. She's a coward when it comes to her feelings. She's a coward when it comes to the cast. She does the same tricks every single season. I already said it last week. And I can't wait to see next week's episode, and I will be calling fully loaded to to get my opinion about it. But I think that for me, you know, at the bigger, I hear everything that people are saying at the at the end of the day. Um, she definitely is, as I said last week, she's the cancer of the show. She's going to use the same tricks every single year, and that's that's that. I think that we can agree with that. That she she does not bring anything to the show. She she'll say something that's triggering, and then she'll sit back like a Karen, and then she'll wait for people to react in a way that she can judge and then she'll go to hr and then she'll complain and then she'll sit and be mute for a whole year get to a reunion and say that you've destroyed me and that I've been, i was victimized on twitter and i think that for me that just becomes boring as a viewer you know i don't know if i want to if i can sit down for three hours or four hours and analyze and dissect these women because as black women on some level i, I respect them all i do in varying degrees but i think that for the show as a viewer it becomes very hard to watch a show when you know it's when you could predict what the storyline is going to be next year. I already see with the with the hit and run. I mean, not the hit and run, with the with the thing that happened with Karen and whatever comes in. You know, it's going. I I can see what's going to happen. So for me, as a viewer, I think that we all as fans should probably get together and agree. Yeah, we we kind of know that Giselle is the problem, and it's not about the women being perfect. Nobody in the cast is perfect, but right. do I see people that are more toxic than others? Absolutely. So when you're over there grieving, if that's what we're going to call it. And you can sit in that moment and still shade another woman on the cast who's supposed to be your younger sister. Then something's wrong with you, ma'am. You are a sorority leader. You're a sorority sister. Why can't you say, I, I, I was so shocked, even when I saw the clips, I was shocked by Giselle to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I I, I, I misstepped. I, I shouldn't have, I felt the way I felt, but the way I delivered to you was a hot mess. You and a woman who's almost 60 years old, no shade to that. You're supposed to do what Karen does sometimes, where you can put aside that kind of protective thing that you got going on where you can get to the real core issue. You're two black women. Let's just get real. You're two black women. There's ways you can communicate with each other. You don't have to always sort of sit around and judge a person's reaction because Candace is a reactor. She's not setting people up. Monique destroyed her own relationships. Most of these people that she's had arguments with have destroyed their own, you know, she's not responsible for Juan and, and Robin's bad marriage, you know? So I think that that's so, it's so, um, and I think also, for me, Giselle is, is um, exhausting because you almost have to be a lawyer to talk to her. She, you literally have to sit there and analyze and sit. I'm like, girl, wait a minute, lady. I don't. I'm not. Gonna, I don't like you enough. I don't care about you enough to sit around and analyze what you've said for five years. Stop being so damn draining, please. Because as a human being, you are exhausting me. I can never be friends with a person like that in my life. 
And I, so I, it's it's amazing to me. And I want to say too, she's so fast to say that a, a couple of weeks ago that she was like, oh, what you know, uh, what's her name? Candace is responsible for what happened with DeBar. But listen, you are running from enemies of Potomac too, ma'am. You said some. You said Sherman's ex-wife was a horse. Now, what if she showed up at that thing wanting to fight you, and you didn't have no bodyguards around? You would have got clocked and it would have got knocked down. Then people would have been laughing. You would have been playing the victim again too. So stop it. I, I, she's too old for those kind of games. And I'm not aging. I just think I'm I'm surprised because I know women who have you know mentored other women who have protected and who have done that kind of stuff. Sometimes you have disagreements, but you have to go to the table and say I I made a mistake. I may not what I've said may be what I thought or what I felt happened. But the way I delivered it, I'm I look, I, I, you know, I'm getting a reaction on you that I didn't anticipate. I'm sorry about this. Like, girl, let's just sit down. They were able to do that sometime in um, Atlanta. They're not able to do that here. And I think that the producers here are just um, not doing their jobs. So as a viewer becomes hard, I, I don't I, I think that sometimes it's interesting to hear the dissection of the characters in the five years, eight years ago, who said what to who. But in the, the day, if we want to continue to watch this show in the future. Then something has to be done with Giselle. Point blank. Period. She is the problem. If we, if if she's not going to be handled or fixed next year, we're going to be up here debating again about somebody reacting strongly to one of her nasty maneuvers. Right. <laughs> nasty maneuvers. I agree. It is is it is getting sad to watch. Really, is not the fun way thing that it used to be. These reality shows is becoming extremely toxic. And then the toxicity is spilling over into the real world with the people who watch, right? It gets to be so triggering. It gets to be, go ahead, Dadon. I see you want to say something. Well, can, I say one, can I say one thing too before yes. he said it? I, said, I actually enjoy everything Don said earlier. I really enjoyed it. But I was going to say one thing too, not to go in the back, because I know, uh, uh, I think one of the guys was mentioning uh, the blogger. I want to say one thing, and I don't want to talk about that blogger, but we, for me personally, Deepa, I came to YouTube under Mel NYC reviews because I was so annoyed how was, how the reporting was with the fight and also the the the, 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 tol the um, salad tours because I knew, or at least I assume allegedly, that as you just said, and I love that you said that some of these stars on these shows they do buy off bloggers. It's known. So if 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 ninety percent of reporting of the incident or the episode is the same review, and you see those people, you know, in pictures with them and stuff like that, we know who these people were a couple of years ago. Now you have a character on the show saying because of the reporting, um, I'm I'm literally having depression. I'm having suicide. I'm I'm having some ideation of unaliving myself. Candace said that, and with the reporting of her a couple of years ago. So. Um, you know, it does get a little toxic like that. So when people are attacking out of the blue, like why would somebody on a platform literally make it a personal habit because they are connected to one of the stars? So that to me makes it toxic too, as to your point. I think that when the, when stars start buying up the bloggers and then we're supposed to believe that these people are, are you know, when, when you're starting the show and you're fighting it, you, you're fighting back to the people, you've been set up basically. You've been set up to sort of publicly embarrass yourself. I, for me, I, I love Car uh, um, Candace as a character, and I wish that she would know that it's a chess game and that they're not playing fair and they are setting you up and they are sort of putting people on you out of the blue to be very harsh with you. I believe that very strong. There's receipts about that. So, you know, I think it's just ridiculous that people don't believe that, it, you know, you know, whoever she um, defended herself with in the past. Again, at the end of the day, Giselle's the problem. And I can't wait for next week's episode because I will be fully prepared because I respect your show and, and I love, you know, talking. But I had to call in with that part right there. Um, I'll be ready next week for you, Diva. Absolutely. All right. Sounds good. Go ahead. Be ready. Um, uh, before I uh, drop, I just want to mention one thing. Um, when Candace, Candace mentioned her departure from the show uh, last night, if anyone caught it, Robin said, uh, get out with that. I did. And, and Candace said, oh, I'm out. She is like she she said, uh, uh, you know, the way I caught it was she she was saying, I'm out like I'm done with this. Um, It was just it, she's she never said anything like that before. Um, So I don't know if I was the only person that caught that, but I didn't know. I heard it. I heard it. I would have to catch it again. But, it's you know, the Peacock version, it was at the last fight that her and Giselle had. It was that last battle that they had. And yes, it was on Peacock. Good. She did say it. You know, I'm not saying she did. I just, I just have to go back to catch it. Um, but 
But the thing is, she knew, she already knew that Giselle was trying to get off the show because she knew before we knew that Giselle went to HR on her, right? And so that's why she said, she says she wants my black behind gone, but I'm not going anywhere. She said that during the season on one of the um, episodes, I can't remember which particular one. Um, it's just sad, it's very toxic. And I don't see how Giselle thinks she's going to win with her attitude and the way that she behaves and the way that she treats people, especially the way that she treats the husbands. Um, Emmanuel, you want me to swing back to you? What did you want to say? I just want to say something real quick because last week, E, Sebastian, and I were dragged in the comments. They tried to come for us. I say try because they couldn't find us, but they came hard at us for talking about Wendy. And they've even come at you, Diva, when you say something about Wendy. Uh -huh. The thing is, I think it's problematic and I think it's dangerous when fans become so obsessed over a person. And listen, we all have our favorites. That's normal. Right. When it comes to the point where you are saying to us that absolutely nothing X person could do is wrong. When y'all say we can't come for her, when y'all say we hate her, when y'all deny facts and try to bring alternative facts, you're right, Diva. When you said everyone in the cast is a mess, and it's okay to call to call out people, um, because no one is perfect, but the cult like group think is what creates a lot of these problems. It's what creates the toxicity, the death threats, the division. So I just wanted to put that out there. No, and I do I do agree with you on that, Emmanuel. I think when the yes. people it's one thing to come in the comments and say you don't disagree with somebody, but to get absolutely freaking bananas and start it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that's why wait, hold on one second. Okay. That's why I, I stopped um recapping Love and Marriage Huntsville. Love and Marriage Huntsville on their own channel. Because, listen, for, for my cable TV, I got to pay extra for OWN. I, that's just the way OWN is, right? There's one package for whatever channels, and then you got to get a high-level package, at least here in New Jersey, if you want the OWN channel. And there was, I used to love I Iyana Fix My Life, and that's the only reason why I used to keep the own channel, right? And then, so I watched Love and Marriage Huntsville from the beginning, and I, I just loved that show. But then it, 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 the show started to become toxic, but worse than the show, the fans are beyond toxic. It's, 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 it's insanity. Um, and what people used to say, and I would have to delete comments because people go all the way to the left. And every now and then, I, you know how I get, I had to straight tell some people off because I'm not above it. You're not going to be coming in my channel acting a whole monkey nut fool. Go somewhere else and do all of that, right? So I had, you know, and then the other day when I prayed for Martel, the people, some people lost their natural mind. If you are so evil, so evil that when somebody is praying for somebody and you never met said person and, and let me and let me back True. up a little bit more i don't know i haven't met too many females unless they've been married for like years upon years that have not been cheated on <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wanna I want somebody to come holler at me if they have not been cheated on. So the things that you know Martel has done, there's about 20,000 plus men. You know, he wants to go with the 13 point whatever million. Well, there's about 13 point whatever million men that do the same thing, and they are dragging this man for filth. Like they never heard of such thing before. And let's not go low with the conversation. I'm not saying it's, it's not wrong. I'm just saying it happens. And some of y'all are sleeping next to a no good man right now. And some of Robin. them know. Robin. Yeah. They all know. You understand what I'm saying? So my thing is 
But when you get to the point where you want to throw so much hate out there, how can you say somebody's wrong, but you are right by throwing hate? It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. You are right for throwing hate, but it's wrong. It, in my opinion, run this. I got to grab this phone real quick. Go ahead and talk to the people. Can I just say hey, something uh, really quick? In, in my opinion, yeah. it's like uh, Andy was saying that his shows aren't like love and hip hop. Atlanta. Well, he's proven it to be a lie because he's exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, Savannah, go ahead and say what you gotta say. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, that was like um, Can you hear me? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, panel. Hey, everyone. I just I've been dying to get in. Um, because this this um uh, part two and um. It just frustrated me more than than part one. Um, I just was wondering how a show who gave us absolutely nothing all season, um, this this reunion has been so uh, frustrating, and um, these women um, are just. Um, I, I I just uh, first of all, none of them are friends. And I'm wondering how they're going to come back next season. And um, I'm trying to see who is going to, what relationships will be salvaged and who's going to make it back next season. Um, because from what I hear, there's still one that's not returning. And I'm trying to see who it is that's not coming back. Um, uh, Mia, um, a shame on you as a woman, as a mother, for not protecting your children. First of all, um, as you should, um, that that storyline um, it, it should have never aired. Um, and for Karen to be the one um, to be the shield for your child, it it was disgusting. Um, deplorable, and I could not believe that Mia even allowed it to air. Um, I, I just think she tried to do that so she can secure a spot for next season, and it, that that just be being the the um, kickoff of the reunion. It was just disgusting, and it just went downhill from there. Um, I, and then it, it just got even more frustrating with the Giselle. Um, it, you know, it, it was. I felt. Um, I felt so bad for for um, Candace. You know, for them to for Giselle for. You, we all know that Candace cries. Um, is very emotional, and she cries. She she cries for for anything and um but for i mean bottom line she's still a human and she feels emotions and um for them to for Giselle to say you know that that she made it about her when um she didn't allow her to to be empathetic towards her at that moment um she couldn't even give her a thank you for um um that was that right there would have been an olive branch to to for Giselle to say, you know, okay, um, showing her that she was empathetic of the passing of her father. Um, I, I was just disgusted at Giselle for she not allowing, um, showing that, that, that she did have some type of emotion as a woman. I was just like, really Giselle, um, Candace can't win. Candace cannot win at all with Giselle. And she was just quite evident that she just wanted her gone. Um, and like she, like Candace did something to Giselle when Giselle was the one who created this storyline and it just um, got away from her. She, cre it cre she created this lie and, and she did, you know, once you create a lie, you have to um, continue to a lie, create another lie on top of another lie and, and create and um, keep feeding the lie until it got away from her. Um, then, um, yeah, I also did forget NECA and, and, and Ashley was there. Um, and then what else was going on? Um, 
Robin, Robin, I was disgusted that you even opened your mouth. I, I, you should have had been um, going around the stage and just helping them break down the set or just going somewhere. I didn't believe you and your emotions or um, your fake. Uh, you didn't push out one tear. Um, you did not value any type of relationship with, with Candace whatsoever. I didn't believe anything of what you did. Um, I, I don't know why you even had um, uh, any, the audacity of you to come at Chris and ask him any questions um, in regards to that fake storyline with the, the woman. Um, and your husband is probably laid up with some other, uh, with the, the, the ball, the, the other basketball coach. So, um, shame on you. I could see why you're allegedly gone for next season, but, um, frustrating. I can't wait to part three and I can't wait to see, I, I really want the show gone. I really think they need a timeout and a full recast and, I just think they need they need a break. I really do. It, it's it's, I, and I think the, also the 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 audience and production. I just think it's so toxic. The conversations are toxic. There's nothing productive about this. And I agree. It's like Love and Marriage Huntsville, um, and Love and Marriage DC. And it is just going towards that Love and Marriage hip hop. And it's just. It's toxic. There's nothing positive about this show whatsoever. It's it's toxic and is it's done. I, I'm disgusted by this show. Yeah, it's definitely toxic. Um, did everybody get a chance to speak? Hey, Jeff. Hey, um, um, yes. Sorry, I just want to say something really quick. Uh -huh. Um, so as far as I totally agree with you and Candace. Did I lose y'all? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I'm here. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I, I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm angry. I cry when I'm sad. I'm a crier. I have a lot of tear ducts. And <laughs> it does not make a person weak or anything. And a lot of times people get that twisted just because they see tears. Mm -hmm. They think that's a sign of weakness. But, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then I wanted to add too, it's really funny to me that Giselle is. You're kind of going in and out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, with Giselle being the face of the show, we really don't know her other than the fact that she's Jamal's ex-wife, right. former first lady. Yeah. She has these children. And we met her dad a few seasons ago. We really don't know anything else about her. That's we heard she has a sister, but that's a rumor. We don't even know if that's true. And lastly, regarding the whole witchcraft thing with NECA, I'm from the islands. And if someone were to accuse my mother of Obia Ahar, witchcraft or voodoo or anything like that. You cannot come back from that. I mean, that is just a devastating thing to put out there. And especially people in that community, if they start to see your mother or your family, that really puts a really nasty stigma on your whole family. And it, it's something that kind of will follow you. So. I think a lot of people don't understand how disgusting that accusation was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Justin, did you speak? Um, no, not yet. Uh, for for me, part two was just so exhausting to watch, just to see Giselle and Robin again not being held accountable. And I felt like I was the only one dad looked at Giselle crying and I just, I, I couldn't feel sorry for her. I, I, I couldn't. It's just because you can't lie or if you can't talk about people and expect someone to feel sorry for you. And I think to me, it's more, it should be, this should be a wake up call, but I can already see her 
using this, her father's death as an excuse of why she's going to be an asshole next year. She's going to be like, I'm still grieving and I'm still grieving. And I, I just, it's just annoying. I've said this before and I don't know if anybody else feels this way. I always felt like if the whole cast did come back, Giselle is the one that shouldn't be back because I feel like she's the main one that's holding the group back. Yeah. And, and um, for the NECA thing, I've said it from the beginning that NECA was using this for a storyline and you tried to make turn limbs into lemonade. It didn't work. You, you tried this. Yeah, you failed. And with the Mia situation, it's whatever. She's going to lose them how she got them. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, but just with and then the colorism thing, Giselle really pissed me off with the whole I went to an AKA, I went to a sorority, using those horrible excuses for that. Like I think to me is like it's just weird. It's just like when 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 white people say I can't be racist because I have a black friend. Like it's right. just, it's, it's <laughs> I was literally looking at that last night. I was like. It's literally giving this because the fact that Robin pulled out her triangle and started crying, I just, ugh, it just didn't work out for me. Right. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, can what? I say one more thing, Diva. Give me a minute. Okay, oh, how can we? Um... Give me a minute, Katrina, give me a minute. Oh, okay. Victor, I agree with you. Right? It, no, they, it was clear. It was very clear that everyone is not hold to the same standards. And that's exactly, I think Chris did, said it very well. I don't care if you like him, dislike him. I think Candace's husband said it very well. And he gave a very good example. One person could say I misspoke and all is well. We never recycle back to that again. Another person, they God forbid every word that come out their mouth it, it, it's a hot mess. It's very unfair. Go ahead, Katrina, and then I'm about to close out. No, it's going to be quick. I was just going to say, you know, Giselle father died. Um, rest in peace to him or whatever. But mm-hmm. when Karen, mama and dad died, they treated they her care. like crap. Well. Thank you. That, and that's the thing that, that kills me the most is the fact that Karen's parents were both passed away and they still gave Yeah, they treated her money. like crap. Going through and her house, dressing up like, in gray, trying even, to see if she was there. It was ridiculous. And she won't sympathy? No. Right. And even though Giselle went to go check on her, and I think that's the only reason why Karen is... I, I honestly feel like Giselle is going to give Karen hell next year. I mean, y'all say, people say that they're still cool, but mm, I can I can already see Giselle doing it. Giselle is going to use Karen again for another issue and i feel like if karen doesn't come back if she comes back next year and if she's not transparent about what happened then that's just going to make it worse for her mm-hmm. because when she wrote in her statement about you know using her mom's death as an excuse i it's just you're 60 years old you shouldn't be you should know better by now and i think that this whole cast needs to go but I mostly feel like Kiana, Jacqueline, and who was the other new girl? It was another new girl on the show. But I think that they need to bring them back and make them full-timers. Because this whole original cast is not going to work. <laughs> yeah. You know what's sad, though? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm about to close out. Um, what, what is very sad is that I said it before. This is a major opportunity for people of color to even enter this arena and make this type of money just like that. Because you see the actors and actresses are clearly saying, we don't get paid right. These girls for eight episodes, and I'm gonna put it on the low end, are clearing two to three to $400,000. And you would rather throw that out the window. Why? Because you can't get along as adults. Giselle is in her 50s. I guess Robin is what? In her 40s, Like right? Karen said, a hard 40 or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's in her 40s. And you got all of these girls that it's like, where do we? Listen, I, there's no job that I know of unless I get to become the CEO or some major title in a company where I'm going to clear that amount of money. But I, I tell you, if you do, you are definitely working a 70, probably the 80, 80 hour week. You working your behind off. So 
they get to do, let's just say it's 10 to 15 episodes. Then you get to go on a trip, a whole vacation. You get to do all of this stuff, clear that check, and y'all can't get along for eight to ten episodes. I mean, you got to be dumb, stupid, or both. And and the and like, sorry to interrupt you real quick. It's the, it's more the fact that like, and that's why I say I appreciated Miami a little bit more because they fought and they got over it and they moved on as a group. And I, it's weird to me how Miami is getting a whole cast change up and i think the only one that needs a main cast change up is potomac mainly oh right okay i'm gonna close out I um, love um i just want to say too in the chat please be respectful to each other and i do say over here many times um thank you tanya like i don't like to start calling the cast member names i really don't um i think it's unfair Everybody, yes, come on, respect one another. Um, I, I don't want to do that over here. And I don't want the chat going at each other, right? Um, I don't want us to become the show. I do not. I don't want us to become the show. So I, I just want us all to be able to have a good conversation and to understand that um, this is this is not... Um, what is it? We, 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 this is not the way people should treat each other. Um, and we got to learn if we don't, if we as adults can't get along and agree to disagree, what are we teaching the youth that's coming up behind us? And that's what they don't understand. The bigger picture of what even Giselle is showing her daughters. What, what are you showing your daughters? And Mia, what she's showing her daughter by engaging in this type of behavior with um right. Ink and yeah. G. And like Karen was the only and, one to say. Okay, that hold story. on, y'all. I'm about to close out. Hold on, guys, because I'm I'm I I I gotta I gotta do something. Um give me yes, I I I I'm connecting. I appreciate you. I'm connecting and that's and that's why I'm about to close out. But I am connecting. I get it and I appreciate you and and, and much love for that. Right. Thank you. Um Everybody over here, listen, Diva loves you, okay? I cannot control the chat. Um, yes, yes, I love y'all. Um, good night, goodbye. Hit the like button. If you didn't hit it coming in, hit the like button going out. Um, thank you. I, I love y'all. Goodbye and good night, y'all. <laughs>